So today I have with me Old Millfieldian Ewan Dale, class of 2004 and now the current director of Millfield Sewing. So Ewan, what was your best memory from being at Millfield? Interesting question. Uh, lots of fond memories from the place. I was here for seven years, but I think the, the overriding one is the, the family aspect. Uh, I obviously spent a lot of time swimming whilst here, but uh, that real bond that you get with your, uh, your peers as you go through the years and you experience all the, all the things that Millfield has to offer. Okay, and do you remember any of your teachers from when you were at school here? I do. Uh, when I first started back here as a staff member, my house parent was still the house parent of the house that I was in, so Mr Page in King's Elm. But uh, I think Mr Ackhurst wins the prize. He was my maths teacher while I was here and uh, he's obviously still here and doing a good job. So yeah, you, you remember your teachers fondly and you know, you, you have better relationships with some than others and, and Mr Ackhurst was certainly that for me. So what would you say were the main areas of continuity versus change at Melford? I think largely the ethos has remained quite similar. I think Millfield is world leading in its ability to harness the potential of pupils in a vast number of areas. Uh, and I think that's still here today. You know, you see kids going in all sorts of different directions and achieving extraordinary things. Uh, I think the main difference is maybe around policies and procedures. You know, I think rightly so, that's become a lot more formalized and uh, a lot more regimented, but in essence, I think the heart of Millfield is still beating pretty strongly and it's, it's, it's pretty similar to what it was back then. And what would you say is the best thing about being an OM? Best thing about being an OM is the network. You know, uh, there's a fantastic network that you can get involved with, reconnect with people after a number of years. Actually just last week uh, a chap got in touch with me that I went to school with and uh, we've reconnected and you know he's, he's had a young child as have I and it's it's just a fantastic, a fantastic group of people, you know, that you've got fond and shared memories with. Did you ever picture yourself as the director of Milford Swimming? Very good question. <laughs> uh, and I'll revert back to my answer to the first question, that family aspect. And when I left here, I never thought I was going to be a swimming coach. I always knew I was going to go on and be a swimmer. Uh, but I thought once I retired from swimming, I'd go into uh, finan the financial world. You know, I did accounting and finance at university. Uh, but when I stopped swimming and went into that side of the world, I found part of me died. You know, uh, that, that real hunger and heart that I had for swimming was lost. Uh, so two years later, I, I went into coaching. An opportunity came up here and luckily enough, I, I, I got the role. And uh, I've just progressed over the last eight years since there. So in answer to your question, no, but I find myself extremely lucky that I fell back into this institution, but, but coaching as a whole and swimming as a uh, activity. Do you think you would have made it to the Olympics if you hadn't gone to Millfield? No, absolutely not. And I'll tell you why, Tash, it's, it's quite simple, it's environmental. Where I was training prior to coming to Millfield was in a small rural town in Scotland. We had a four lane, 25 meter pool that was about to shut. Uh, but my biggest strength as an individual is competitiveness. And when I arrived at Millfield, there was lots of kids faster than me. And that, although hard initially, was just motivational, motivation for me, you know, and, and that constant knowledge that the next step was just a little bit away. You know, I was training here with people that were training for the Olympics. Uh, so to me, that pathway and that journey seemed completely feasible uh, and it did it it really ignited my passion to try and become an olympian uh, i always knew i wanted to try and be as good as i could but in terms of actually qualifying for the olympics if i hadn't had my seven years here under under helen as a coach and, and doug campbell at the time i don't think i would have been in a position to consider that feasible by the time i got to 18 years old how does Millfield differ from being a student versus being a teacher? It's eye-opening. You know, when I first came back and you had all these memories of, of being a student here, it was quite eye-opening as to the amount of, as I say, procedural stuff that, that goes on behind the scenes, you know, and the amount of care that is actually out there for the pupil that you didn't realise when you were a pupil. You thought it was all a little bit hit and miss and whatnot, uh, but the amount of pastoral care, academic help, sporting help, that you never really took for granted, you never really 
understood when you're uh, and you kind of took for granted when you're a student you really realized when you came back as a uh, as a staff member so how much involvement would you say that OMs have after they've left Millfield it completely comes down to the individual and the value that you put on that network I think some people disengage with it uh, in error in my opinion and I think if I was to give any advice to someone leaving school and linking in with the OM society it would be proactively engage you know especially as you get older you know when you first leave school keep engaged keep in touch there's lots of reunions it's brilliant uh, but as you go further down the line you know I'm 14 years down the line keep proactively engaged you know make sure that you're coming to any events that go on and connecting with any any uh, individuals that you might have lost touch with thank you for your time today Ewan anytime